Welcome back. Uh, today I was going through some of my uh, rifles, redoing some optics, and I figured this was a great opportunity to talk through uh, optics and optic mounts, mostly the mounts. So it's been an evolution over the years about the best, most efficient way to do uh, your primary optic, your backup red dot or backup irons. I think we'll kind of talk through a little bit, bit of that evolution here and some things for consideration. So on the far right here, you know, this is kind of your traditional 2.5 to 10 by 24 uh, night force scope, and it's mounted in these classic uh, badger rings. So the, the key thing here is that the only reason this optic can be mounted in rings is because it has the right eye relief. That you don't need to get you know, the, uh, the ocular end of this optic all the way forward. It's okay back there. All these other optics up in front here, they need to be set more forward, uh, and the way the turrets are positioned right, doesn't allow you to do that within these rings. You can see it's basically at its furthest point uh, of travel. You'll see pictures uh, from older setups, especially with the Schmidt and Bender uh, short dot, the 1.1 to 4, where guys will actually have both rings mounted behind the turrets in order to get this thing forward. So I kind of lucked out, right? Again, this, this setup works. It's an older setup. And we'll see I also went with the uh, LaRue aim point mount. Okay, so that has a step down in there. So it's a 34 millimeter uh, mount, but it has 30 millimeter uh, shims, if you will. So for me, this is a good way to have you know, the primary like precision optic. Then I have a, a secondary optic that I'll use within 50 meters uh, as a backup, etc., in an enclosed red dot uh, up top. We'll see it also sits high enough that I really don't get too much of the turret uh, obstructing my line of sight through uh, the optic. So that works out really well for me. Another good point about the LaRue mount is that it can mount basically anywhere around the, the optics. You can have it off at a 45 if you want to fit between the turrets. You can put it down low if you wanted to do that for some reason. So a lot of options with the way this is set up. The next kind of evolution was pushing from rings uh, to just a, a complete you know, uni mount, if you will. So this is the kind of like the first 193 mount. This is the LaRue mount. So some, some things unique on this, they did the, the split ring side to side instead of top and bottom. Uh, it works fine, and it's just kind of a, a unique thing. And then on the LaRue, we'll see we have their quick release tabs here. So some people don't just don't believe in quick release tabs. They don't think that they're repeatable. I haven't had that issue, and there are a lot of uh, optics on you know, precision weapons in the military that are using LaRue quick detach mounts. A good uh, tip for these is to kind of crank them down with the included wrench uh, as tight as possible to the point that you need to take a bite of sling and get that in there and then pull that in order to pop it. And that's a good way uh, to make sure you have you know, a solid repeatable mount but still have a QD uh, scope mount. So now we have kind of like the modern competitors here between uh, Geisley, Badger, and Reptilia. So first... You know, Geisley, these were kind of like the first big ones with the SOCOM contract. Uh, you know, this mount in particular, like the dimensions on it were designed for the, the Vortex 1 to 6. You know, I have it with a, a top count, a top cap from Reptilia that fits uh, a Aimpoint Micro or similar optics of a Vortex Crossfire on there. Again, similar concept where I have a secondary or a backup optic on top. Now, the Geisley mount is kind of showing its age. All the accessories are basically top ring mounts from Reptilia. You can't do anything offset with the optic, uh, and it's still running, you know, big, big bolts on the side, just like you know your older rings. So Badger kind of came in, and they did a lot of things right. So they gave you these two mounting points here to kind of J arm out uh, either an optic or a cosine indicator, anything like that, either side, and they gave you some good. Uh, top mount options. So for this one, I have the RMR pattern uh, top mount pa uh, platform, and I have a Holosun 507C on top. Now, my only complaint with Badger right now is really two things. One, all the accessories are super hard to find. Uh, they're never in stock anywhere, and I don't know whether that's a market thing or production thing, but it, it's kind of annoying, right? You want to just buy the thing you want. They also have limited options for top mount. You, know, you can't put an aim point on top with the Badger setup. That's unfortunate. And then lastly, um, I guess we really have two more points. They still stuck with the big bolts, 
all right? And then they also take up a lot of space. So you can kind of see they really double down. That's a, you know, it's a great platform, it's very stable, but ideally I would want to be able to fit this optic you know, in between this space here. And just the way it's, it's set up, it just doesn't work out like that. So you're playing kind of uh, Tetris, trying to figure out how to fit everything. And not the end of the world, it's still a good setup. I'm a big fan of this, uh, but it's imperfect. So next, what I'm working with here is an A-Tacker, a 34mm optic uh, within the Reptilia mount. So Reptilia, they did a really good job of getting light and sleek. They have the same top mounts as they did with the, the Geisley, the same hole patterns as Badger. What they did differently was they went with no nuts. They just have these open bolts there. So you can stick your wrench in there, tighten it down, or use a flathead, which is awesome. It keeps it slick. It cuts down a little bit of weight. Uh, on the opposite end, they went with some springs in here, kind of keep these uh, pushed out when you don't want them to be pushed inboard. And then they make a 34 millimeter cap for the RMR. I know one's forthcoming for the, the Aimpoint Micro. But in the meantime, I went with uh, the Holosun 4.3R, and that is on top of, again, a, a LaRue mount. So again, we're playing kind of Tetris here, making sure everything fits, and we'll see, right, it just, it just clears it, so I can still operate the throw lever, but still have my, my backup or secondary optic up there. Last thing I want to show you guys, right, I think kind of like the, the sleekest combination, the you know, best optic here is the Vortex 1 to 10 in the Reptilia mount with their cap for the RMR. And it's light, it's slick, and there's no bolts sticking out. Everything fits neatly. There was no issues right, fitting anything in here. They just did a really, really good job. So in conclusion, I think if you want to get a optic mounting system, I would go right to Reptilia. They're doing a really good job. They have some 45 degree offsets and you're gonna have compatibility between Reptilia and all the Badger stuff. Now, there's a lot going on here. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And I look forward to your feedback. Thanks.